Great Good to, to see, see you again. Great I always you. enjoy coming to see you. Thank you. you. You, you're always one of those guys out front, just oh. leading the crowd. Appreciate and that. Tell me something about your new gallery. I heard about it. Wow. I'm anxious to get there. What's it all about? Well, we're opening a new gallery in New York City, and it's going to be a real mineral gallery. It's not going to be decorator things necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's going to be real minerals, just Good. like we sell here. Not mm -hmm. changing a business model. It's going to be in the Chelsea Art District of New York. It's on. 10th Avenue and 20th Street. We have a 2,000 square foot gallery. Wow. And we chose that spot because we are in amongst 200 art dealers. There really? are 200 art galleries all within a 10 block radius. Mm -hmm. And we just feel like this will present minerals in the proper place right alongside mm -hmm. the great art dealers of the world. You know, that, that bring me back, brings me back to something that Paul Desatel said years ago. Mm -hmm. He said, fine minerals should be treated like antiques. Yes. And what you're doing is put them right where they ought to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. It's going to be right there with art galleries on all sides of us. And we hope that the same people looking for works of art for their right, home right, will right. walk into our gallery and appreciate these things yeah. and become mineral collectors. Well, these are works of art. They absolutely They're Mother are. Nature's absolutely. works of art. Absolutely. I've always promoted Gorgeous it that way. Gorgeous stuff. Yes. How yes. Are you gonna, what are you going to do for help in a gallery like that? Well, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I have, fortunately, two sons who are interested right. in becoming mineral dealers, and they're going to basically run the gallery wow. uh, with me, and we yeah. can introduce them here. Yeah. Uh, Troy, Connor, um, come on out, guys, and uh, I know you've met my older son before, uh, Troy. You, you've yeah, uh, met Troy, Troy before. Good to see you Bob, again. And yeah. this is my younger Connor. son, Connor. Oh, nice to meet you. And uh, yeah. these guys are, and me, yeah. we're all going to be in the gallery together. You got, you got some footsteps to follow here. Well, I think uh, you know, I'm fortunate. I have a son who right. followed me in that. Yeah, yeah. Of course, he's a dealer, and I'm not. But yeah. you know, no, but this it's, is great. It's the next generation of yeah, mineral collectors and dealers, right. and and I think that's what we we always hope for. Sure. Right. Well, you're doing yeah. something that it's going to be interesting to see what effect it has on these two guys, mm -hmm. and that's getting into the Bitcoin. Yes, business. and that is something me that we that. have decided to do. That we will accept Bitcoin as well as some of the other cryptocurrencies as they call them, yeah, yeah. for our mineral specimens. Reasoning behind this is that there are a lot of people in the world who have wealth in, in cryptocurrency. Yeah. Now, and instead of them transferring it into dollars to buy things, they would like to buy things with the directly. Bitcoin itself directly. Yeah. Yeah, well, it and saves them money in a sense. It, it does. And, and it's, it's, there are places in the world where it's safer to keep your money in Bitcoin for them. Isn't that and, amazing? And there are not a lot of things you can buy with Bitcoin. You can't go to a store, you can't go to Walmart right. and buy things That's with right. Bitcoin. But we are open to the idea and invite these people who have Bitcoin to spend. You can buy our minerals. Well, this is, this is a way of doing business that the younger people have gotten into. Absolutely. I'm, I've never been in it, and I don't intend right. to, but you guys are right there. I mean, you're in the forefront. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's going to work. Exactly. In their generation, this is not an uncommon thing, and I think yeah. it'll grow from yeah. there. And mostly, I think it's um, it's it's a matter of value. Yeah. Uh, we know these cryptocurrencies; they they vary in value, minute to minute, day to day. But that's okay because we can accept them at the moment, whatever the yeah. value is yeah. at the moment. Yeah. You yeah. can spend it on our minerals, and uh, you know, I think it'll be. I think it'll bring new people well, actually into you, our market. You do the same thing with stock on the stock Stocks market. Stocks are very similar. It's a gamble. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Okay, it's worth this much today. What's it going to be worth tomorrow? It's exactly. It's really not that different, yeah. and that's why we feel secure mm -hmm. in offering this to customers. But mostly, we're looking to expand the horizon of who can come in and buy minerals. That's amazing. Well, you've got a specimen here that reminds me of Arizona, uh -huh. and we'll, let's take yeah, a look yeah, at it. Yeah, the uh, Chrysocol on Malachite right yeah, over there. Yeah. yeah. You want to take it out of the case? Um, no, that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You know, being in Arizona, you see Chrysocol wherever oh, yeah, there's yeah, copper. Yeah, I mean, right. it's a dirty green stain or a yeah. gray, dirty blue stain sure. on a rock. It's usually a crumbly, uncuttable. Yeah. You know, you don't even collect it for specimens. Right. You put it aside when you're digging something else. <laughs> but this thing is just astounding. I, I, I love this. This is These were found about a year ago uh, in the Congo. Okay. But the combination of the blue against the green to me is just spectacular. Yeah, it is. It uh, is. And, and the fact that the Chris Cola has this nice sort of waxy luster yeah. uh, it really appeals to me. Yeah. Can't you just see Mother Nature forming that malachite and then 
just placing. That. <laughs> yeah, that's how it looks, doesn't it? <laughs> it exactly. does. Yeah, yeah, it looks. It's exactly a work like of that. art. Yeah, 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 yeah. That should go well in your gallery. I, it, it, absolutely, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Usual. That's a fun piece because of it, it looks like the face of a fly. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. With the eyes. And yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. just uh, whenever you can get a mineral specimen that looks like something. It's yeah. always add. It's an additional sure. feature that we sure. like to point Give, out. Gives yeah. it an edge. Yeah. yeah. And that's from China. That is Chinese, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's the only one I've ever seen like it. Yeah. I mean, we've seen the Botryoidal Floris before, sure. just never saw one that looked like anything. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go take a look at an Arizona piece. We, I mentioned Arizona earlier with Chris Ecola. Absolutely. You've yeah. got one yeah. over here that comes from one of the oldest mines in Arizona. Marinci Clifton area has been worked for way over 100 years, 150 mm -hmm. years almost. Mm -hmm. And that's just a gorgeous piece. Oh, I, I love the combination yeah. of the azurite and the malachite. Yeah. Did, did that come out during Stan Edmund Shea's work? Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, it I think, did. I think okay. it was one of the pieces yeah, that so Stan, Stan got out. Yeah, yes. He was given permission to work. Uh, they were expanding the pit, and they mm -hmm. get into an old oxide zone. Uh -huh. And, yeah. and he, uh, he got in there and was collecting. He does a great job of collecting. That's, that's a precious piece. Yeah, it really I think so, is. too. Would you like me to take it out? Uh, sure, sure. Because it, yeah. it has a beautiful glistening effect. Uh, the, yeah. the azurite is just yeah. fabulous. It's super. It's a wonderful yeah. piece. Yeah. yeah, and you rarely see them this large. Yeah. They, you they, know, people see that and they say, oh, Bisbee. Well, right. <laughs> they forget, you know, when... when uh, Old uh, dealers used to come out here. They would go to Marinci and they'd go to Bisbee right. and take things back east. Mm -hmm. And somehow Bisbee got credit for yeah, <laughs> more, uh, well, more Azure. Yeah, yeah, it was the. I think somehow it had a uh, a, a, a bigger reputation, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah. For who bright with malachite on Ganya. Yes, there's a story that goes with these. You don't see a lot of these on the market, mm -hmm. which is kind of surprising because during mining operations. When they blasted, you know, the miners have to wait for the dust to clear sure. and the fumes and everything. And the, the next shift that came on walked into where the blast had been and a, an entire wall of a vein was exposed, mm -hmm. was covered with these malachites really. yeah. on cuprite. Yeah. And you just don't see any no, anymore. No. And, you, and you rarely see them damage free. Yeah, because yeah, of the blasting, yeah, I'm sure. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and the miners yeah. had to scramble yeah. to grab what they could. Yeah. But mining continued, and I'm sure a lot of that good stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. got crushed. Yeah. Yeah. And then the broken crystals aren't wasted because they're facetable. That's right. The, yeah. in, under this is a beautiful yeah. red color. Yeah. Yeah. yeah beautiful gem red color. Beautiful yeah. stuff. Yeah. I haven't seen one like that in quite a yeah. while. That's no, this a beauty. is this is an old one from yeah. an old collection. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. As, as I we've been told. Uh, these came out in the 1950s, oh, and one person nice hoarded sakes. them all, well, and nice just decided to sell them recently. And we have, uh, we had a few of them. Yeah. This is the one we have left, and actually it's sold already. But uh, there are a few more around the show that we've seen, mm -hmm. yeah. and they have this beautiful yellow wolfenites coated with clear quartz. Yeah. It's Fascinating. The, those those exceed anything from the Arizona Finch That's mine. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of people don't remember the Finch mine yeah. because it hasn't produced anything in no, oh my no, God in time. decades. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, yeah, these are a lot bigger. Oh, this copper yeah. is just such a special piece. It's very yeah. old, obviously. Yeah, sure. But look at the crystal on this thing. Yeah. Isn't that a, it's, it's astounding. Look, I mean, look at the size of this yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that mine, there are so many stories about copper mining up there. Yeah. You know, I, uh, Jean Kemp, who was the curator at the Michigan Tech Collection mm -hmm. for years before yeah. she passed away, she told me when she was a kid she could walk down the street at night and she could hear the miners pounding on specimens really? in their cellar yeah. because what they would do if they got a copper and silver specimen, uh -huh. they'd break away the copper so they could sell the silver. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's a wonderful specimen. Yeah, a lot of people mistake this for Jonas mine. Yeah. But it's actually, this is a Russian one, and it's one of the finest quality ones we've seen. Um, uh, these, I, I think these actually rival the Jonas mine. Uh, for qu for quality and color, Are they, uh, is it out of Urals? Or? Uh, this is from the. It's actually out of a quarry, huh. and um, what they have been doing is they're on the floor of the quarry and they blast the floor and they find these pockets of tourmaline. Oh, for God's sakes! As of and they all, all unfortunately come out broken, so they yeah. have to be put back together. This has two repairs, which is yeah. minor compared to most of them. <laughs> uh, but very few of them are glassy and gemmy like this. Yeah, Most yeah, of them yeah. are sort of have that solid red look. Yeah, that's really um, beautiful. As of, I was told recently here at the show 
that they have pretty much mined out the floor of the quarry. And for them to continue the work, they have to remove about 30 meters of solid rock not, to get to the floor again. Not, not going to happen. And I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So these are going to become uh, pretty rare soon. That's, mm. that's, that's my impression. It's a beauty. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a very fine yeah. piece. Yeah. Yeah, I've spent quite a bit of time in Russia, and I don't remember seeing anything that good. The, I've been in this mine. This is uh, up there in Wisconsin. The Flambeau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Casey Jones, a kid that I used to go to rock concert with yeah. when he was a teenager, yeah. uh, got the got the contract yes. to to mine yes. these. And so I was able to get in there. It's a fascinating deposit, completely gone. Uh, yeah, it's, it's covered over completely. Absolutely. Yeah, the yeah. the EPA claimed. insisted on the pit yeah. be covered. Yeah. But the mine, the deposit itself was fairly rich in gold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They made quite a bit of money on the, on the gold. Uh -huh. And of course, excellent calcocytes and other Oh, I think the, the rival calcocytes oh, yeah. anywhere in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've done a study on the Bristol copper mm -hmm. mine, you know. These are far better. Actually, yeah. we have a Bristol right over here. Do you? Yeah, yeah. What I would say is that the the flambeau pieces are more colorful, but yeah. look at the crystallization yeah. on that. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. It's so sharp and, yeah. and just you know, I have to I have to tell you, this mine was discovered in eighteen ninety eight. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry, seventeen ninety eight uh -huh. by a man named Botsford. Mm -hmm. Well Mr. Botsford Mr. Botsford happens to be a distant relative of Evan Jones. Oh, really? His son, <laughs> through his mother, on his mother's side. Yeah. Bob, this is a new find yeah. this year of these beautiful clear quartzes with yellow inclusions from Columbia. Well, Unfortunately, we don't know what the yellow is yet. We're working on it because we can't test it being it's inside the quartz. Yeah, right. But we right. did find one crystal that was cracked open and is currently being tested, so hopefully... Soon you'll, we'll you'll know what the word. yellow is. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of these around, and they range from this deep, uh, I would call it a mustard yellow, mm -hmm. to sort of a banana yellow, a little more tan. Yeah, but yeah. they're really yeah, wonderful, attractive specimens, yeah, yeah. and that we've never seen anything like it before. Yeah, I've, I've been to the emerald mines down there and seen plenty of quartz, but nothing like that. No, these yeah. are these are really brand new. Yeah, yeah. and what's the locality? Do you know? We don't know the locality yet either. We're not sure if it's the typical quartz locality where mm -hmm. the clear quartz come from. Yeah. Some people are telling me now that these are coming from Muzo area. You know how it takes time sometimes yeah. to figure out a true yeah. locality on things like this. Yeah. I think that's for new new. Mm -hmm. That's really only new new thing that I think we have. I mean, well, I have to deal with that guy. <laughs> let me close these so you don't kill it? yourself. Irv. Always good to see you, by golly. Hey, How are things in San Diego? Very nice. Very nice. Really? I wish you were there, but it was very nice. I, I damn near nice. moved there once, but uh. yeah. Yeah, you and Johnson Tankers, right? Yeah, yeah it's a little there you priceless. Go. Bob, before I, I, I start, yeah. you know, we're showing you the goodies, I want to thank you Ooh. for your editorial in Rock and Jam. Thank Every you. time you do On the Rocks, it's the first place that I go. Really? Yeah, because you have experience the previous years <laughs> that you have, like, 80 of them. Yeah. <laughs> And yet you have a really good handle on the current market and what's yeah, going on. Yeah. And you have a perspective that sometimes compares the past with the present mm -hmm. that I think would really help the new collectors, the yeah. not-so-new collectors. They, they need to know how we got here. Absolutely. And what happened before. That's and I'm going to tell you something else. I just thought of this. This is just my opinion. I think you should take all of those editorials and make yeah. a book out of them. Oh my goodness. Not the frugal collector, that's something <laughs> different. I think that's wonderful, yeah. but your knowledge, your experiences are very important for the future of this hobby. Well, thank you, thank you. I mean it. Yeah. You know. I got a couple of very, very, very fine things, okay. and they're more considered the upper end, as, as yeah. we know. High end. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> I mean, well, for a Legrand, yeah. I think this is wow. quite superb. Yeah, you know, I heard the water table is dropping slightly, so maybe this is recent? Yes, this is one of the recent ones. There, maybe that's why. Yeah. But the termination? Yeah. Oh, what yeah. a piece. Yeah. Isn't that And it's lovely? deep teed, actually, yeah. if you look yeah. through all that yeah. smudge yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I do, you know, I've been looking for a Legrandite forever, yeah. and um, these are, I, I personally think that this new find for quality... Mm. Maybe the best one. Yeah, the I don't color, know. It's the an color opinion. is yeah, color is pretty intense. Gemminess. Really nice, yeah. And look yeah. how it perches up there. Yeah, that's a great rock. Yeah. Somebody just referred to this. Somebody that doesn't know what they're doing <laughs> referred to this as 
I think that's fossilized dinosaur poop. Oh, give me a break. I know. Well, this is <laughs> that, ex, that explains how important this is because this person knows minerals and couldn't figure really? Actually, they thought it was a basmacite. And I, first of all, it's huh. not a basmacite. We both know what this is. Yeah, that's amazing. This is from the Nass Mine okay. in Michigan. Yeah. And as far as I know, that's the sharpest large dodec I've ever oh, yeah. seen with no yeah. modifications. Yeah. Look at the edges. No on modifications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look at that. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a textbook specimen. And you can hold it this way. Yep. You can do it like this. Yeah. yeah. Um, very much a connoisseur's mineral. And even beyond connoisseur, yeah. it's more a copper collector's mineral. Yeah, anyone who appreciates a good crystal form in a, in a specimen, that's it. You're not going to get a better dodecahedron of copper from anywhere. I don't care where. And what is the theme of the main show? Yeah. Right? Yeah, right. So this Crystals, epitomizes the theme of the main show. Yeah, I yeah. mean, seriously. I mean, most people that I show this to, they have no idea what it is. Yeah. Really? Even this matrix yeah. is interesting. This leads in to a concept that I think we should explore. And again, I have to credit you <laughs> with this because it was in one of your editorials in Rock and Gem, okay. which everybody should read. So... These type of minerals, these high-end minerals yeah. that I deal with most of the time, they fund the other minerals so that collectors that are of limited means can afford them. Yeah, that's a point I've been making for a long time. You know, there are people who complain about the cost of minerals today. Yeah, absolutely. And that's true. A lot of people can't afford the, the best that's coming out of the ground. But every time one of those high-end minerals sells, some of that money... Yep. filters back down into the business and into the mining business, into the specimen recovery business, and what comes out of the ground, we wouldn't see if it hadn't been for those Absolutely. efforts. Absolutely. It seeds so this. We, and and yeah. not to say that these are any, yeah. listen, these are world-class minerals. Sure. You just don't cost world-class money. Yeah, but uh, yeah, every project brings out the killers, but at the same time, it brings out a lot of other stuff. Yep. The money is made on the good, really good stuff. But those lesser specimens that are very fine, absolutely, they go into the marketplace for the average collector, and that's what I tell people to look for. Know your minerals and go to a show, and you'll find something you can afford that's good. You know, it's something that I do. And um, you know those supplements, those collector yeah. supplements? You have right. Italy, you have Austria, sure, you have sure. Southern California, you have Arizona. You know, I actively do two things. One, I read the profiles of the people because I think the people are the most interesting well, part sure. of this hobby. Yeah, that's the and hobby. two, I look at what people collect and what they like. Yeah. And I gave a talk recently where I had the California supplement. Yeah. And I had people that I know that buy rocks up to $300. Mm -hmm. And I scanned their pictures that were in the supplement. Yeah. Then our friend Gerald Demery, he goes up to maybe seven or eight, $9,000. And I scanned his minerals, and then the third one was Bill Larson. Mm. So what I did was I showed slides. I said, look, you can get a mineral that costs this amount of money, this amount of money, or this amount of money, right. and you get the same enjoyment from it. Sure. And sometimes they're a little smaller, they're a little different, but you know what? Everybody can enjoy it. The $300, the $8,000, right. and God knows what Bill does. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. sure. But this is a brucite from Pakistan. That's, that's really fine. You know, I call it a tree. Yeah. Somebody else called it broccoli. Now, everybody hates broccoli. <laughs> Easy <laughs> so I'm not going to call this broccoli. Well, it's got cheese it's on it, so Is it okay. cheese and broccoli? Okay, good. Yeah. But look at the luster. Yeah. That's look at the thing. form. And I have, give, I have to give a shout out. My friend Mustafa, Fine Art Minerals. Oh, yeah. He is the one that sold this to me and a couple of others. He always has something of value yeah. for everybody. Good. And he's a friend of mine. And yeah. this quality of a specimen, let me tell you, it was by... Tucson Sanders is not a lot of money. Okay. You know what? This piece was under $2,000. Oh, now, it sounds like, listen, I don't want to sound elitist. It sounds like a lot of money. Yeah. But for a mineral of this quality, you could see this on a shelf for, for five or $6,000. Sure. And sure. I showed this to a dealer, and that's what they said to me. Did yeah. you pay, what was that, six, $7,000? Yeah. It mm -hmm. was not, and it was below $2,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. This hobby is educationally intensive. The that's more right. you know, the more you can find what we call a sleeper. That's right. And that's another thing. The yeah. more you know, the more yeah. you can find a mineral that's a sleeper. <laughs> that's my this constant. One was, this one was in a coma. That's my constant pitch. This wasn't a sleeper. Okay. This was, a, this was in, in a coma. coma. Okay. That's a spinel from yeah, Tanzania. Yeah. Ooh, Look ooh. at that yeah. color. What a sharp crystal. Yeah. Wonderful. Lovely. 
Sitting right there on the Matrix, beautifully positioned, excellent display. Under $1,000. You're kidding. Yeah. Now I did work to it, but no. still, it no, wasn't think, that different than this. Yeah, think about this now. You know, somebody had to mine that thing and, and dig it out of the ground and trim it down or whatever and ship it all the way up here and for that kind of money. Yeah, this this makes my point. The high-end specimens that come out of there, that money is flipped back into the business and it's things like this that, that come out. They're not the Max Killers piece, but they're fine. They're yes, beautiful. They are beautiful. They're a great educational piece and a display piece. Didn't cost a lot of money. Didn't cost a lot of money. And another thing, when you're dealing with Tanzania, remember, this is different than most other markets. In Tanzania, the gemstones are funding oh, this. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah, can get yeah, minerals yeah, that yeah, are reasonable yeah, because yeah. the gemstones, yeah. that's goodness. where they make the yeah. money, right? This is a freak. Again, okay. Tanzania. Next tour, tour Tanzania, again from, from Graeber. Oh, isn't that nice? You could shave in that. But check this out. It's a floater. Yeah, I'll be darned. Now, huh. this obviously was... Probably in a clay seam yeah, yeah, with uh, yeah. enough room where this thing grew, but you didn't lose the luster and there's no contacting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look That's at the right. fingerprints on it. My goodness yeah. gracious. You, you could get CSI to figure out who, <laughs> who stole it if they ever steal it, right? But uh, yeah. Great crystal form. Excellent. The next one, I think, is a freak. Wow. Isn't that nice? Wonderful color. Beautiful crystals. Now, again, yeah. it's a prenite from Tanzania. Yeah. And, you know, when you look underneath it, you can see that's tanzanite. I'm, no, hmm. I, I'm not an official mineralogist, but I have a feeling because there's so many different looks of, of prenite from Tanzania. You've got the mm. orange gem mm. ones, you've mm -hmm. got this, mm -hmm. you've got yellow. Mm -hmm. I think the chromophore for this color is probably the same thing that's the chromophore for the, for the tanzanite. Mm -hmm. Because they always seem to be either Manganese. on tanzanite yeah. or yeah. associated with tanzanite. Yeah, some fluid. This was from Rob Levinsky, okay. and Rob Levinsky is known as a, a, yeah, a high-end high -end mineral yeah, dealer, right? Dealer. Yeah. He gave me a very good break on this. Now, what makes this special, first of all, it's Sumeb, which is a classic, right. but don't those dioptase crystals look like chocolate chips in a chocolate chip cookie? <laughs> Usually it's a mess. Isolation is really weird. I actually yeah. thought this was a fake when I first saw it. Absolutely real. Ed David collection. And look at the isolation of that. Yeah. Well, I think you got two, the two generations on there. Absolutely. Yeah, the little micros. Which really gives it some, some wow, there. right? Yeah. That's a wonderful specimen. And then if you look at the, the back. The color is wicked. I happen to love Ed. There's his old number. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's like, I, yeah. I see these, and I, and it's, I remember Ed, and it's like, you know, it's bittersweet. You know? So you guy. look at yeah. it, and that. You know, this was not that inexpensive, but I couldn't lay off it. I have a problem with little things. <laughs> how is the cactus? Yeah, yeah. How is look at that? How is the, look what nature does? It just yeah, blows me away yeah, every time yeah. I see this stuff. Boom, 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 boom. I know, and everything's double terminated. Not a lick of damage, and it's it's actually mounted on a termination. Yeah. But I look at this kind of thing, and I'm like, oh my god. Now listen, it was in the thousands, not yeah. crazy. Yeah. But <clears> it, <throat> I couldn't lay off of this. Yeah. It, it's well, just minerals of any size. Yeah. I mean, they're just incredible. It's a great miniature. Wonderful stuff. Well, thank you. And Thanks, have, a good, have a good day. Oh.